Well, hello there. It's Sandy Alnock with this month's Create in Color for MFT. And I am excited to be coloring Merry Wishes. Very cute little stamp set. And I'm using my Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils for this one today. And I'm going to try to color like Stacy. Stacy is amazing at both designing stamps and at actually coloring them. Like even more amazing at coloring them. If you haven't followed her Instagram, you have to. I just, I, I just sit and melt when I see her finished drawings. They're just so beautiful, so peaceful. Just her technique is lovely. So I wanted to create something to almost be an ode to that. And I've stamped my images in grout gray ink and started to color them with my pencils. And I'm putting down my blends of color before doing all of the water portion of the coloring. I find that if I do a little bit of nice blending work with the pencils, it's going to be a lot easier by the time I go and add the water to it. You can do, of course, a lot more of that blending with the brush itself, but you'll get better and easier results, I find, by doing some of that blending first with the pencil. So this little bunny and the uh, penguin together I thought were a really funny little combination because they're actually not in the same habitat and <laughs> they're just little buddies here. I love that. Maybe they're in a zoo. So somehow they ended up in a, a little scene together somehow where you get a little North American bunny with a, an Arctic penguin of some kind. But I think they're such cuties. It doesn't really matter if they're in the same habitat or not. So I'm using a number 12 silver black velvet brush, one of my favorites for doing card making type of painting. And I say card making type of painting because I do a lot of fine artwork too. And I tend to use big old giant squirrel hair brushes for that. But for coloring small things, small stamped images and little sections of scenes and stuff like I do on mm -hmm. cards, that those kind of big brushes are not only overkill, but they're too big. And I use a number eight and a number 12 in general for my card making. And that usually gives me a, a good enough range to be able to do wide flat areas as well as small stamps. And these particular stamps from uh, MFT in this particular set are actually nice and big. And that's one of the reasons why I thought watercolor pencil would be good for them because it's sometimes hard to get into teeny, teeny, tiny areas with the brush, even though you can get in there with a colored pencil, it's a little harder with a brush. But I love the size of these images. Some of the ones that are done by Stacy have been on the smaller side, and that can be a little bit of a challenge if you're doing something with brushwork, if you're not, if not proficient with brushwork. And it's a hard thing to get proficient at. It's, you know, watercolor brushes, and any kind of watercolor work is just a challenge. They say it's the hardest medium, and I believe that 100%. I've been working on it for years, and I don't know if I will ever master it, but I do know that it is one of the most satisfying when you actually get it to work out. So there you go. One little thing to notice on the penguin is that hand that's sticking out and holding the ornament. I left a highlight on the portion of the hand that curls around. I, I say hand as if a penguin has a hand. No, he has flippers. So the portion of his flipper that is curled around and holding the ornament, I left a highlight on that so that it retains that, that look that it's curled around because otherwise it would just be sort of a flipper end hanging out there in space and would have no way to be holding onto the ornament. And yes, I realize I'm once again anthropomorphizing things as if a penguin is able in some fashion to hold an ornament and wear a hat. But you know, this is fantasy land where we live and it's all fine. So for my little guys, I'm adding some color to them now and I'm gonna use the same colors on both of their hats, but I'm just gonna reverse the emphasis. So this one is gonna feel, even though it's got both colors in the stripes, it's gonna feel a little more like a pink hat and the other one's gonna feel more like a yellow hat. So they'll have a little bit of opposite coloring in them, but they'll be related to each other in the same way. So I keep the color palette simpler for the overall card, 
without going too overboard on colors. Because sometimes I find that that my gut instinct is, oh, let me use every color I own. And that's often overkill. Instead of just trying to do something that's a little more clear and simplistic and helpful to the person looking at it to determine what's going on in the image. So here's where I'll, I'll do mostly yellow on this hat with pink in the stripe. And of course we have to have coordinating yellow gloves because you know bunnies wear gloves, I guess. There you go. Love, love the uh, whimsical nature of these stamps and the crazy nature of my brain that tries to make everything somehow make sense when it doesn't because it's whimsical illustration. There you go. Decided to try to add a little bit of color to one side of the hat so I get a little bit of dimension there because it's one of the few solid empty areas where I can get a little bit of a hint at a shadow. And on an image where you're not going to get a lot of depth into some of the images, take advantage of the spaces that do have large open areas because that's where you can actually get in and do some nice, nice blending and create some shadows. Now one of the other favorite things for me with watercolor pencils is that you can add details. And they're not limited to only having the, the coloring in one certain type of way. You can get the overall color added to an area by doing that first pass with watercolor brush and spreading the color out. And then when you go and draw all those little furry hairs in, you still have color in between them. If you do that with colored pencil, you still end up with white spaces in between them. So I'm not sure if that makes sense, but in my mind, sometimes having that first pass of watercolor underneath of a pass with the pencil tends to actually fill the whole space in and make it look more smoothly blended, even if it's not completely blended and I'm leaving a little bit of the furry look on top. So I'm gonna add now a little bit of detail onto the string of garland that the little bunny is adding to the tree because you know bunnies decorate their trees at Christmas, just like we do out in the forest where they live with their penguin bunnies. <laughs> and now I wanted to add a tree. Now I considered stamping the tree from the stamp set back here, and that's certainly possible. But I also was gonna to have to mask around everything and I didn't really feel like doing that. And a tree is a really simple thing to add in yourself. So I just made a triangle and made it a little fuzzy on the outside. And then when I spread the water around and the, the color with the water brush, I just made it more fuzzy, that's all. And with something like this, where they're clearly got decorations in their hands or decorating a tree, you don't have to do more than suggest a tree in the background. It doesn't have to look perfectly like a tree. But one technique that I uh, teach in my watercolor jump or watercolor pencil jumpstart class is making a palette for yourself to add color sometimes because this will mean that you can coordinate the colors. You can use the same colors by scribbling off on a scrap of watercolor paper and then using that as a palette to pick up colors and add them into whatever you've just painted because it's already wet. So you'll get this really soft blend of color in the tree in the background but you can do it by having a lot of control and creating yourself a little tiny palette. And it's also a great way that you can make a palette and travel with it. Just scribble off a bunch of whatever colors that you wanna use on whatever you're painting and use it that way as a palette, which is kind of nice. So I decided to add, as in the stamp set, a few garlands at the top, because the stamp set also has the garland not completed on the tree because the bunny is finishing it, not done with it yet. So I used the stamp in the set as a guide for how to decorate my little tree. And then I just added a little bit of shadows underneath at the bottom to give them a little bit of shadow to stand on so that they don't look like they're floating. The finishing of my card was trimming it down to be a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card. I did have to borrow a stamp sentiment from another MFT set because the ones in the set didn't fit. I didn't leave myself any room. Oopsie daisies, but let's get festive. Seemed to work just perfectly for this card. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button, hit that old thumbs up, and subscribe to MFT for lots more fun. And I will see you guys again next month.